For more insight, let's turn to Saurabh Gupta. He's a resident senior fellow at the Institute for China America Studies. Always great to see you, Saurabh. Nice to see you, Elaine. Well, first, I want to get your reaction to this meeting that happened right away, right ahead of G20, and reports that both sides will restart climate talks. Oh, I think the meeting went well. It was to be expected, I would say. It didn't, it, it wasn't greater than expectations, per se, because the two leaders have a warm and personable relationship with each other. But given the state of U.S.-China relations, nothing can be taken for granted, and it's, and it's highly welcome that the that the relation that, that the meeting went off well and that there were deliverables coming out of the meeting including on climate change and including restarting uh, the bilateral dialogue process in certain areas right how optimistic are you about that because both leaders discuss the most pressing issues of the world many think that is the china us relationship biden reiterating the one china policy well, it's it's important, yes. You know, the problem has been a lot of these, uh, from an intention standpoint, the meeting obviously did go well, but we've seen good intentions expressed previously in many of the of the virtual meetings also, which have taken place over the last two years, but that has not been translated into policy. And partly that has not been translated into policy is because on the core issue of Taiwan, it is not just the U.S., but it's the U.S. president who's often been reading off the script, and that then breeds mistrust. Uh, that having been said, I, I'll make two points, and that is one, this meeting hit the baselines which needed to be hit, which is reestablishing in-person high-level communication, restarting dialogue mechanisms, and, 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 and providing, at least attempting to provide reassurance to, to each other. And of course, as I said, the, the, the dialogue mechanisms are going to start. So from that standpoint, I think the, the, the meeting was a success. We'll have to see going forward if they can really translate this into action. And I get a sense that from the U.S. side that they do want to draw a line and they do want to have a more cooperative stance with China going forward over the next year or two, at least yeah. the administration, that is. We see um, handshakes and smiles there. How significant is this face-to-face? -face? I mean, really, this is the first time these two leaders have met uh, since they've been, since Biden has become president, and really the first time we've seen a lot of this kind of a level of meeting post-COVID or during COVID. I mean, it's been a really a long time. Um, can a lot be accomplished because this relationship has seen more down days in recent years? Yes, I think actually a lot can be accomplished. I think the two sides hurt each other by not meeting, and that's partly mostly to do with COVID. And because the COVID protocols on the Chinese side are that much more stronger, the Chinese leader, President Xi, and other senior leaders have not been able to step out that often. They've stepped out very infrequently because then they have to go into long quarantine periods once they come back home. And this has really hurt, I would say, China's diplomacy more because Chinese, the Chinese leaders have stayed back longer at home, and therefore uh, the ball cannot be moved forward because the most important decisions are taken at the highest levels, and, and it's not always possible to do that in a, in a virtual format. So I think this is very good that they've been able to meet in person, that they should meet in person more often, and that every meeting on the sidelines of the G20 shouldn't come down to being a high-wire meeting where there's anticipation expectations, but also a little bit of trepidation. I hope they will be able to stabilize the relationship, meet more frequently, and actually translate that into positive action going forward. Yeah, these two leaders have actually known each other for many years, met over the years. So there's a personal touch here. Where do things go from here? What do you think we could see in the coming days and weeks post G20? Let me touch on that personal touch because I, I, I want to emphasize how important it, it is. Of course, they've had a long-standing relationship, but even when President Xi was president and, and President Biden was still a vice president at that time, I'm talking in the second Obama administration, uh, President Xi treated president, uh, vice president Biden in a very, very serious and thoughtful way. He, he did not he did not treat him as a vice president and just leave and, and, and give the priority to President Obama. I remember when, when President Biden traveled as vice president, I think it was in 2013, President Xi hosted him for many, many hours and they had a very detailed dialogue. 
He has treated him very seriously, and that's one of the reasons they have such a warm and personable relationship. And I think it's very important, especially given the state of U.S.-China ties, that this sort of relationship can really stabilize the relationship. We have to understand the Republicans will probably take the House over the next two years. That will add instability, particularly on the with regard to the Taiwan question. And therefore, this high-level relationship between President Xi and President Biden will, can really be a stabilizing factor. We should not discount the importance of it. All right, coming at a great time. Saurabh Gupta, always great to get your take. Thank you for joining us. Most welcome.